Okay, I thought I'd go ahead and make another tutorial. Um, the reason why I want to do this one is I thought it would be a little bit more fun. Uh, i show you some of the most recent stuff that I've learned and um, maybe you'll learn something. Anyway, um, I have on my go-kart these long bearing hangers. They're about four inches longer than they should be by default. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I don't want these things to... Uh, I, they need gussets, basically, in between the sets. What I'll do is I'll take some pictures and show you later. But if you're looking at it from the side view, from the back, um, what I'm going to do is draw the part that I need. So I'm using um, inch and a quarter tubing, 1.25. And so that will just represent one tube. I have to go ahead and duplicate that with a control D and these two parts, Alt S to show the fill, but these two parts should be 3 and 5 eighths apart. So if I go and highlight this part and select the right nub, I know that the X is 1.25. If I highlight this part and select the left side, I need 1.25 plus 3 and then I'm going to add another 5 eighths plus 5 divided by 8. So that's how far apart those two pieces of tubing are. Now I have some cord the, the uh, bearing hangers I cut out a quarter inch plate. Um, I don't care about the height on this so much as I do the width, 0.25. So from the side view, from the back, basically this is the profile you're getting on the bearing hangers. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in and bring this in. Um, let me duplicate that, put one over here and shift click that, alt K, I just want to line these up horizontally. Okay, these are lined up horizontally now. So this little lip right here should be 3 eighths of an inch. So the right hand side of this, I know it should be 1.25 minus 3 divided, 3 divided by 8. And now on the right hand side, this side is 5 eighths of an inch in. So um, let's grab this left coordinate. 4.875 and this left coordinate should be 4.875 plus 5 divided by 8. So essentially this is what my the this is what the uh, bearing hangers look like. This is upside down by the way. But this is what the bearing hangers look like hanging off of the tube and you can see that they're going to have an opportunity to um, roll left or right. And so what I want to do is build some type of a gusset. Um, I'm going to flip this 180 degrees just so you get an idea. This would be the top of the cart. This would, the axle is going to be right down here, and I want to be able to put a gusset in right about here to prevent these from uh, being pushed from the either direction on the sides. Okay, so I'm going to rotate those back just because this is the way I drew my plans up. From the bottom right here up, I want to be able to go six inches. Just this is just based on measurements that I made. Um, so we'll make this six inches tall. Oh, I'm going to group all of these right here. This is my control. Actually, let me weld it all. Grab that and move that down just a hair so it's touching that part. I just did a basic weld on those. So now I'm going to bring this part right into the middle. And I'm going to just make it wide enough to come and touch the quarter inch pieces. And we'll make the Y. Actually, let's select the bottom left nub. Okay, so that's good. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to take this whole thing now. This is this is essentially right here my gusset um, raw form. I'm going to take all of this, do a XOR weld. Oops, let me uh, undo that. Let me take this piece and this piece and group them. Control G. Now take everything and do an XOR weld on those. And it's still complaining, so what do I have going on? I've grouped all these pieces, that's fine. Let's make sure they're all lined up on the bottom and try this again. There we go, no complaints this time. So I'm just going to delete these pieces, and this right here should be my raw piece to. Uh, uh, let's get rid of a extra node we have out here. Right click, delete. Okay, so this is my rough form that is going to be sitting inside of um, between those uh, two 
bearing hangers and basically provide my gusset. Now, uh, I was designing this a little bit beforehand and I decided that I wanted to make it a little cooler looking than this. So I think what I'm going to do is build a box, maybe make it one and a half inches square. And let's make another box. Let's see, what is our width here? Our width on this is four. Uh, so let's go maybe three inches. I'd like to do three inch box. So make it three inches wide. I don't care about the height so much. Actually, I do. Let's make it about a half inch. Now I'm going to line these up. Alt-K, center this way, and I want them to actually be aligned on the top. So this is what I have. Now what I'm going to do is weld these. And I'm going to come in here and take out this point and take out this point. Now the reason why I'm doing this is, is mostly just for looks. So I'm going to uh, bring this in here. Let's center it. And I think I'll bring it down just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and do that. Control 1. That's my XOR weld. And now I've got this piece. This is, this is my raw form. Now what I want to do is I want to lighten this up a little bit. I do have a theme on my go-kart that is using um, a grid. Um, so what I've done beforehand is I went and created this grid and I'll sh let me delete all these. I just created a line. I rotated it 66 degrees. I think it was a half inch wide. Now if I go layout array on a grid, um, I have this checked right here, object to object. Because if I click on this one between objects and I go, let me tr show you, if I click Object to object, it's saying physically the object to object is this far apart. If I click on this other one, it's using the outer bounds of these and then separating at the distance, and that's not what I want. So I have them going about just a hair over an inch apart. I'm just going to create a whole bunch of those. Close that, group these, highlight them all, control G, control D for duplicate, flip it, and then I'm just going to line these again horizontally and vertically. If I show you the Alt-S, this is kind of the pattern I'm getting. So I want to weld these. Um, Hotkey for me was Control-2. Now this is the cool part. I've, I've showed you this before, but um, I'll show it again. So say like I want to keep, I want to basically go and take this pattern and punch it out of here, but I want to keep a border around the edge, maybe um, half an inch. So what I need to do is I take this part, I'm going to go Machine, Create Toolpath, Female, and I'll go to Basic Cuts. Now, I'm going to edit my tool I call Half Inch Border. If I edit my tool, it's called Half Inch Border, it's Plasma, and the diameter is 1 inch. Um, because if you want a half inch border all the way around, this is going to compensate. Uh, you, you, you need a half inch on top, half inch on bottom, that's going to add up to an inch. So to basically double up whatever you want. If you want a three quarter inch border, you're going to need a one and a half inch diameter. So I created this, added it here, um, and then my I don't have any lead ins or anything. So if I say OK to that, what it did is it created this offset one half inch in from everything. And it, it does a great job. I love that option. So now I'm going to take this line because it is a tool path and break it. Control B. So now this is this is what I'm dealing with right here. In fact, Control Z that I'm going to keep that in its exact location because I'm going to center something in on that uh, here in a second. So now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to bring it over to my grid and I'm going to just move it around and try to find what looks best. I, w I want it even. Um, that looks okay. It looks pretty okay. Let's let's give that a shot. So I'm, what what I do is I just line that up until I think it looks all right. Take all of these, do a XOR weld or Control One. XOR weld again is right there there. And what that did is that broke this apart. So now I'm going to take this Control G and just center it on this piece that I left in here. Okay. Now I don't need this line. I just left it here to center it properly. But now if you look at this part, I'm going to actually Alt-G this, ungroup it now. I don't want these teeny little points here. And 
that I think I'll get rid of too. So now highlight everything, control A, control 1 for my XOR weld. Notice I didn't group all that stuff in the middle. XOR weld didn't know what to do, it freaked out. Control Z will take care of that. Highlight all the stuff in the middle, control G to group it. Highlight everything again, control 1. Again, now if I should do an Alt S and show you my part, that is what it looks like. Um, I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. And that is what my gusset will look like. I actually think that looks pretty okay. Um, I need two of them, control D. The one on the opposite side is um, opposite of this, so I'm just going to go ahead and mirror it, horizontal mirror. Um, if you don't know where your horizontal mirror is, because I had to add this one to my toolbox manually, you can also do this. You can uh, do a vertical mirror and rotate 180 degrees. It'll accomplish the exact same thing. Okay, so now I have these two parts. I just need to go cut these out, weld them on, and get some pictures of it and show you what it looks like in the, uh, the finished part. Thanks for watching.